good afternoon good friday afternoon instagram just sitting outside enjoying a little bit of this nice weather and also just wondering if i could be honest with y'all which i'm sure i can but can i be honest and say that i'm waving at everybody hello hello can i be honest and say that i was at uh, Aviana, I was supposed to call you? Oh my goodness. I am so sorry. I will definitely do that. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Um, If I'm being honest, sometimes I just think my customer service sucks. Um, <laughs> maybe it's not my customer service, but I did feel super tested today. Like, I feel like I think in business, I'm just starting to feel I'm too nice. It's so many things that have happened in like the last two weeks. And I've been cool and just really let something go that I felt like I shouldn't have. Um, as far as with a, a something that happened on my team. And um, yeah, I just, you know, kept it professional and kept it moving. Anyway. I feel like in business, I posted this on my Facebook page that there is really no room for emotions. So that's what I did. I, in the end, I took my emotions out of it and, you know, kept it moving, right? As a professional, um, it's just really hard when it feels that others are not being professional. Nonetheless, <laughs> I did that. But I think today, um, when I, I, was, I was speaking to a potential client, you know, and I, we were actually speaking by text first. And then I just, you know, I called her because she was saying the website was, um, she was having a hard time understanding. Okay, fair. So I called her and everything was going okay. Um, until it came to the point where we started to discuss packages and what was included in one package versus another package. And then they were like, well, why isn't this included in this package? And I think I just <laughs> lost it. I was like, I have an upgraded package that includes more things because, well, it's an upgraded package. So if you buy a smaller package, then some of the upgraded services are not going to be included. So some of those services in one of my packages for post-op care has to do, there's oxygen, there's um, some um, more like elevated red light, LED light therapy. And as I'm reading that to her, they're, you know, they're just cutting me off like, oh, I don't need that. I don't need that. They were just upset that I didn't include um, seroma drainage. And I'm like, well, if I must justify my pricing, which I am as an entrepreneur, you know, I'm three years in, my business is growing. But one thing I'm not doing anymore is justifying prices. Like, I'm not. I have been there. I've done that. I felt the need to do that at some, you know, when I first started. And, um, you know, all of us as nurses, we, we, we have to know our value, you know, and I know my value. Like at first I would compromise it and I would second guess it. Can't say that some days I still may not, but ultimately I know my value and I know how much I put in. And I know also that certain services, everybody can't do them, you know, and I am licensed to do this. This is a very specialized procedure it is a risky procedure so no if you purchase the cheapest package because you just want the cheapest package know that it's not going to be included um in that package so but i'm done like i really had it like i realized today that i'm done trying to help somebody or help clients see my value because i have so many more so many more clients who never question price who sometimes don't even care and I know everyone has a budget and I respect that because so do I, right? Uh oh, let me turn because the, the light is getting dark out here. But I am not any longer compromising or or just trying to justify my value. And so if I'm being honest, just lighting. If I'm being honest, there we go. I'm just done with that and if I'm being honest, I love being a business owner. I love being a nurse entrepreneur. I love supporting other nurses, but I'm also very transparent. And um, 
the, the time will come, whether you're new or whether you're established. And it is almost like it's something about us as nurses. That, yes, and some people dread this part, that someone will basically come out of left field and make it seem that what you're offering is not valuable or question your value, question your price. It will happen. And don't be discouraged. Um, I've been there. I've been discouraged. I question my pricing. Well, maybe, you know, I'm, you know, not ready for being a business owner. Maybe I'm too emotional. So I did learn, like, it's not emotional. It truly is. This is what I put in. This is the energy I put in to what I do. And this is what I'm comfortable with. And of course, a little correlation with the market. But ultimately, I'm definitely not trying to price match because what are we comparing here? I don't know their training. I don't know their experience. I don't know their education. So <laughs> I'm not even going to attempt to try to compare because for what? We, it's no point. And honestly, I feel like the people that come in and just undercut and try to like be the lowest price are truly just struggling to know and really learn their value. And believe me, that will not last forever because when they do realize it away or, or awaken to it, they are going to get sick and tired of um, underestimating and getting underpaid, whether they're an entrepreneur or whether they are working w with a facility or an employee. Like, it doesn't matter either way. We have a value and we should not compromise it. Oh, uh, Black Nurse Entrepreneur says, I get that feeling for sure. We know our value for sure and we love what you do. Well, thank you. But yeah, like that really tested my gangster today. Like I was like, no, <laughs> this person did not. Not to mention in the last couple of weeks, just um, just the ups and downs of being a business owner. But um, again, if I'm being honest, it comes with the territory. And I feel like now three years in, I'm definitely, I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. I'm in it for the long haul. And I am definitely much more comfortable with letting clients go and understanding that every client you win some you lose some and that's okay because the ones who come through my doors the ones that I everything aligns and I'm the person for them and they're the client for me it is a beautiful you know it's such a rewarding experience so I definitely have to just understand if it's not going to be that I don't want it and I don't want it for them right so that was super frustrating today by the way who saw my story I have a master class change of subject I have a master class coming up next week where I will talk about um, talk about starting your post op concierge and also um, additional revenue streams additional service lines to build a full concierge nursing agency and that will be next wednesday at 7 30 p.m eastern standard time the link to register is in my story and it's also in my bio and um hopefully it doesn't give trouble a couple of people messaged me that that link was given trouble <laughs> yeah just one of those freaky fridays but um they messaged that that was given trouble hello hello um so yeah y'all register for that because i'm going to tell you the five steps or the formula for um just the foundation for a concierge nursing agency post-op and guess what when we're talking post-op i have expanded that topic to not only include cosmetic surgery but we're going to talk general surgical recovery and um there are so many options we for being a full concierge agency starting with one service line or another you know we mentor on a few one of them we mentor on the other we mentor on is postpartum so you can start postpartum and then add post-op and keep in mind that you do not have to be the nurse who does all of these you can hire nurses with that expertise so i'm trying to get nurses to think that way it's great to start with just you if you're wondering where to start start with you and what you're passionate about as far as post-op postpartum senior care and then from there you can add the additional service lines so i hope to see y'all next wednesday i'll try to keep it like to an hour it's on a wednesday night at 7 30. we'll try to keep it to an hour i will also um after going through just some of those basic foundational steps or the formula for your concierge or starting your post-op concierge i'll also talk a little bit about post-op recovery boot camp um my virtual weekend that's coming up as well as my live event that is coming up i'll talk about those and just do open q a at the end so 
I hope to see you all there. And thank you all for hopping on. Um, am I doing a virtual? So, I... Sorry, y'all. I've got to make sure my dog... Oh, there she is. <laughs> I'm sitting out. Make sure my dog's not in the street. Yes. My virtual... So, I took post-op recovery boot camp, which was always my signature live event. Day one is post-op recovery. Day two is IV therapy. And I have turned it into a virtual weekend. So, now, same, same setup. It's the same information. It's just that now I have a virtual format. So... I did a digital at your pace and that's been okay, but some people still want the actual interaction, but they cannot travel to the live event. So they want the, you know, the in-person interaction. So the compromise is that we have virtual, same information, same course resources, but virtual. So day one, post-op recovery or start your post-op concierge and day two is IV therapy. You can attend one or both days. You don't have to attend, but just like my regular live post-op recovery boot camp i also have a two-day ticket for that virtual weekend so you can buy the two-day ticket and or you can buy a one-day ticket and for those who attend the webinar next week be on the lookout you do want to be registered because there will be a some very special pricing very very special pricing for the two-day ticket for live or virtual. And this pricing has not been seen since when I launched Bootcamp originally. So it's like throwback pricing, y'all. It hasn't been seen since 2021. So of course it's going to be pay in full, limited. So you have to know, you know, this is what you want. So it's not really for, oh, maybe I'm curious. This is for the people who have been winning the next class. I'm ready, I want to start. That's who it's for. So I'm going to have um, special pricing for the two-day ticket that will last until the that number of slots is filled. So, but yes, virtual post-op recovery boot camp weekend is next weekend, April 22nd and April 23rd. But there, there's more. There's another one in June, and then there's also yes, yeah, so there is another one in June. <laughs> so June the. The first weekend, the very first weekend, I wanted to avoid Labor Day. Wait, Memorial Day. I wanted to avoid Memorial Day. So I have it set for the very first weekend in June, which I think is the third and the fourth. So same, um, same virtual weekend. Day one, Saturday is post-op. Day two, virtual IV therapy. And then the live event, the in-person here in Tampa will be still on June 24th and 25th. But yes, I'm, I'm doing the heck out of the virtual weekends now. The way I have them set up is there will be two days, Saturday, Sunday, just like the live event. Again, same information, same transparency, <laughs> same me being honest about everything about business. And also, I just feel like the advantage here is that this is something that I truly do. I actively work as a concierge nurse out in the streets deal you know going through this process every day and every day i'm learning you know more and more of what clients need and what they're looking for so of course that's great experience and um all the better for me mentoring other nurses to get started and it, just like me expanding me expanding post-op recovery boot camp to not just cover um, cosmetic or plastic surgery recovery is just for that reason because as I've grown in business my business has expanded to not only be cosmetic or plastic plastic surgery recovery so that is um definitely it's it just gives you the opportunity to start with already with uh, additional service lines additional add-on services and the considering additional revenue streams and i'm very heavily focused on showing you how to build one your business as an asset and two build your business for build the foundation so that as you are ready to grow and add your staff and build out into a full concierge agency you are able to so that's kind of how my focus is shifting and it or i should even say shifting because the foundation of boot camp is still the same but we're expanding the topics and it's almost at the point where post-op recovery boot camp may just be its own entire weekend. No IV therapy. No IV therapy. Um, because that's how much and how in-depth and involved. And honestly, I love IV therapy. It is great to have as an additional revenue stream. But I am. I really want to focus on 
concierge nursing and growing your concierge agency. And I, because one, that is what out of my business, that is truly what is the most successful for me. Um, that is truly, um, what I love. So I want to share that with other nurses who are also interested in that. So I, I really love, um, post-op recovery bootcamp. This your passion, purpose, and job is amazing. Thank you so much. I appreciate the encouragement today because yeah, you may have missed the beginning, but I kind of got on here on just a little bit of a rant, nothing bad, just a little bit like, <laughs> so thank you. I appreciate that. So yeah, I am, I'm definitely even after, so April next weekend, virtual June. And then I think I will have another virtual weekend in September. So I am doing it not every month, but I'm y'all, my goal, I said this at the beginning of the year, my goal, I've already helped over a hundred nurses, right? Probably closer to about 125, 150. My goal is hundreds, hundreds of nurses. So if y'all can't travel, but you're still ready to start your business, keep in mind this can be started alongside a full-time job because that's exactly how I started it. If you are unable to travel, I know nurses are in contracts, but you still want the mentorship and the information. I am, (laughs) my goal is that I can reach more nurses. So Y'all share with your friends. Um, I just, I want concierge nursing to just be like, so many people don't know what it is. So many people approach me like, can I do this? I want nurses to know that exactly what it is and that, yes, it's, it's something that all of us can do. And we do not have to really fight the battles of what's happening in some other industries in con- the concierge nursing. So does it hurt to start here and then maybe add on? other like the IV therapy for example or um you know med spa style services no not at all not at all these clients kind of go back and forth like clients who are interested in concierge care are also likely going to be interested in IV therapy um you know med spa so I'm just a huge hugely excited about concierge nursing because it is just it's in us and we don't have to fight so many battles and so much red tape. And I'm just over here, like I see a lot of fires and a lot of explosions happening around me, but I'm just over here minding my business and and ready to pivot because the way my business is set up, I can do that. It's not tied to a collab. It's not tied to if the state suddenly decides that I shouldn't be doing this. If I have to let IV therapy go today, I can, okay, I can. Um, I love it. I really do. But, you know, it's just so much drama happening. So uh, Black Nurse Entrepreneur said that is the truth. If y'all don't follow Black Nurse Entrepreneurs, by the way, too, like definitely give them a follow. Great organization. And I've made so many connections and built so many relationships and um, gotten so much support and encouragement on days like today where <laughs> where I realized that, you know, being emotional emotions and business do not mix so um yeah y'all have any random questions for me because because if and if you do catch the replay and you have a random question for me all of you know it's always cool to dm me um (laughs) aviana said come back to dallas i want to i look i absolutely love dallas by the way i love texas and is there a is there i kind of left july open by the way is there a um will there be an event this july will there be a b and e event because um i'm trying to leave my calendar open to catch at least one this year i want you to know was it a struggle starting out um no i would say no if you mean like getting clients you know it has to be a consistent effort at visibility and that's going to be any business any business but the what i love about concierge nursing and even post-op is um i love that clients are already looking for us (laughs) they're looking so i show you how to be found i don't even show you like walk into the doctor's office and wait for them to send you clients that's just one thing you can do i show you how to be found (laughs) nothing is planned for the for july oh i okay i'll keep i'll stay tuned because 
I kind of left even the last quarter of the year open for events, networking, because I haven't done much in these first two quarters. So I left like um, Q3 and Q4 like lighter so that I could um, possibly, hopefully travel to some um, conventions, events, summits, all of those good things. So I will keep my eyes open for that for sure. But yeah, meanwhile, I love Dallas and any excuse that I can find to come there. <laughs> um, I missed you the last time I was there for my training. It is huge. Um, regenerative medicine, anti-aging medicine, those things that I also love are so huge in Dallas. Like I had such a good time down there learning about all that and attending a, a training with um, this company called Avexius. It was amazing. So yeah, any excuse to come back to Dallas is all. I'm, I'm just looking for one. <laughs> um, we didn't even get to see all the fun stuff. <laughs> but yeah, struggle starting out, I would say no, because concierge nursing and starting as a concierge nurse is I started with a full time job. It was not hard. Did it take time to build and gain the momentum? Yes, but I wouldn't say it felt hard. It's really one of the simpler, easier business startups out there, which again is why I'm such an advocate, which is why I want all nurses to know about it. I always say, I still remember the day I was driving down the road, working my full-time corporate job, by the way, and um, <laughs> the light bulb came on. I still remember the moment, the day, and where I was driving, Like, and it was like, whoa, I can do this and this. And it started as concierge post-op care with IV therapy together under one business name. And I was like, this is amazing. At the time, it was like IV therapy, maybe po post-op, but it wasn't really something that was happening together, right? And then, so I was super excited to do that. And then later on, launched post-op recovery bootcamp with the exact model it is set up that way because that's the exact model i started with but with that said remember i just said i just said you know if i had to let something go it would be IV therapy like i would be perfectly okay with it <laughs> i really would um because concierge nursing and what i do as concierge care is just where it's at I love IV therapy in the sense that I love functional medicine, anti-aging medicine, regenerative medicine, those kind of things. But I don't love drama that sometimes comes with as far as, you know, states and regulations. So far, so good in Florida, but I see what we're going through out there and it's frustrating. Um, huge, huh? Yes, anti-aging, Texas is on it. And them people look good out there, y'all. Like, we need, to, we need to be getting in on this, like our community too, because um, they looked real good. They felt real good. <laughs> When are we going to do this podcast? You know what? It's funny you say that because I had that thought. I, I thought about it last year, but I wasn't sure if it was, um, if the podcast was happening. But um, now you see how I'm just on this Instagram, just talking and rambling. I'll get on the podcast <laughs> and I'll be nervous and stuttering, but I'll do it. Like I don't turn down podcasts. I would absolutely love it, especially if we're going to talk about concierge nursing, of course. So, Yeah. Y'all, I'll be on here doing like tours too. I'll hop on Instagram and then I'll hop over to TikTok Live. I do sometimes go on Facebook Live in my Facebook group though. So my Facebook group is the Concierge Nurse Network, of course. So if you are on Facebook, join me there also. But yeah, sometimes I do my social media tours where I'll go live on all of them. <laughs> all of them. Hi, Nurse Haskins. How are you? How's it going in Atlanta? How's your week? <laughs> How's how is the pre-op world going? Nurse Haskin does the pre-op um pre-op um checks or pre-op exams among some other things, family practice and also mentoring nurses. So, how's it going around um Atlanta? Another place that I really don't need much excuse. I love to just hop over there too. And I have not, like I have been so busy with expanding my clinic. When I tell you that has locked me down, I mean, Florida's great. Florida's great. But <laughs> um, it's still nice to get out of here too. Now here in Tampa, the weather has been, well, what you see, right? But um, in South Florida, 
it's been brutal down there y'all but that's like three and a half to four hours away so it's been fine but look here y'all i love to hop on the plane it doesn't matter that i live in florida i love to hop on the plane and get the heck out of here too <laughs> i like to keep it moving yes she is the pre-op practitioner thank you yes hi and atlanta is definitely what i call a surgery city so a lot of nurses will say what do you mean surgery city it's just cities that they usually have a, a like a good concentration or they have sometimes of surgery centers or they'll have um sometimes famous surgeons you know surgeons that are more known so houston is definitely a surgery city atlanta is a surgery city i wouldn't even call tampa a surgery city even though i stay plenty busy here but miami for sure a surgery city i would say vegas i would say hmm who am i missing vegas baltimore miami houston for sure um chicago i see good um chicago as a surgery city so so yeah i i don't even consider and see how busy i am in tampa and i don't consider tampa to be we do have some fly-ins but i don't consider us to be a surgery city so to say um nurse haskins said yes so she's the pre-op practitioner y'all sorry i feel like i want to sneeze it's allergy season um and her business is brighter health primary care in atlanta so if you are possibly looking for clearance preoperative care to prepare for surgery brighter health primary care and among other services um got you covered in atlanta it's always good to support other nurses and nurse practitioners in our nursing community so definitely thank you oh my god how did i that's the original <laughs> i think i was la hollywood <laughs> um yes how did i forget la hollywood i didn't mean to um that was the original like before miami exploded um la hollywood for and you know a lot of lot a lot of um california period like you can't go wrong there's some we know that there's so much space and also i've seen a nurse I don't even know if she'll catch this, but I know there's another nurse that does concierge care that is killing it, and she's in Arizona. So it's definitely, you know, California, we would think, but there's other um, states more toward the West Coast that are also great for surgery. And, and again, not just plastic surgery or cosmetic surgery. <laughs> like, pe people have orthopedic surgeries, neurosurgeries, eye surgeries and need assistance and would pay for it even though it's not necessarily covered by insurance but who knows maybe one day then again i'm okay with cash pay i don't have to i don't think i ever want to be involved with insurance so but yes the original surgery city city la hollywood for sure for sure um now some people may ask well what if i'm not in a surgery city concierge care is something that clients are still looking for everywhere and again there no matter what city you're in there are going to be surgeons there are going to be cosmetic plastic surgeons my the original place where i got the most cosmetic plastic surgery experience was nashville where i'm from nashville tennessee and that's definitely not a surgery city however there is um definitely first of all the city is literally growing it's exploding and back when i was getting cosmetic surgery clients they were mostly like the more well-off well you know um more disposable income clients we know that now is more accessible but it's not necessarily not a good place because to do this because um the surgeries are just different is what i'm trying to say maybe they're not big on lipos and bbls okay i think everybody associates it with that no but nashville has great surgeons because i've considered going to nashville for my own they have um great surgeons for mommy makeovers um um breast augmentations great surgeons for breast augmentations mommy makeovers and facelifts Back when I was working in the hospital taking care of people after surgery, facelifts were huge there. And they still, so there's just that, that's that city's more specialty. So every city is kind of going to have its own pace, its own, you know, kind of defining or definition of what's more popular. So in Nashville, it's definitely more so of the breast, stomach, 
But yeah, I wouldn't go to Nashville for lipo or not necessarily lipo probably, but I wouldn't go to Nashville for like a BBL, right? So a lot of people think unless they're in a city where everybody's flying in for BBLs that they really wouldn't do well with concierge nursing. I I had someone say that they attended boot camp and they were like, well, you know, they went more bed spa, which is okay. Um, she, but she was like, I don't know if that's a thing in my city, but I have people that came to boot camp that are clear in Michigan and they are still dealing with um, surgery clients either after surgery or able to take care of people who are having surgery closer to home. Not everyone wants to travel to Florida or California to have surgery. <laughs> The black nurse B and E. Do I have to have a baby before I can get that mommy? Nope. You can get that mommy makeover, and if you want to have a baby later, you can definitely do it. You know, you just go for your round two, don't you know? You go for rounds, round one, round two. <laughs> there is no limit. <laughs> you just go at it again. <laughs> if if you look, if desired, you do. But no. Now, would it be recommended? Yeah, but the surgeon but they're not going to turn you away as long as you meet the other requirements i've seen people unfortunately have a mommy makeover and then um but let's okay mommy makeover tummy tuck and or breast augmentation so we call it a mommy makeover because we know what happens to those areas after babies but do you have to wait absolutely not you can definitely do it at any time. <laughs> Great question. <laughs> you can you can be like, I'm having a mommy makeover before the mommy look. But no, it is it is perfectly okay. <laughs> right? I've been carrying this stuff around since my birth. Oh my gosh, right? I feel like me too, not to mention um I feel like the last twenty years I've hated my stomach and I can only remember maybe the well yeah like i had a baby at 20 so yeah the last 20 years 20 plus but you know we ain't talking about that i've actually hated my stomach so i'm definitely all primed and ready for a i don't necessarily have to do the full mommy makeover but i definitely want the abdominal plasty for sure aka tummy tuck because oh same i've been i feel like i already was carrying more than i wanted and then baby so yeah <laughs> So yeah, I, I and I possibly would go to Nashville actually <laughs> for um, my surgery. But yeah, so just think outside of the box, y'all, because it doesn't have to be a city where people are flying in to have a lipo BBL. Like there, people love. Some people want to have surgery close to home. Okay, and again, it it may be that they're having facelifts. They may be having breast augmentations. They may be there's people that even get like the surgery where they there's the bleph, blepharoplasty, where the droopy eyelids, they might need a ride home and settle in after surgery. Um, you know, there's people who get nose. We had a nose um, client one time who had her nose job done. Um, again, facelifts. There's so many. I guarantee you, people are having surgery. <laughs> no matter if it's a lipo 360 BBL combo, people are having surgery close to home. So and there are some world-class great plastic surgeons cosmetic surgeons in every city and there's clients who like they're like well dang it i can't find a nurse because i'm in wherever and all the everybody that's a recovery nurse is in florida or they're in california or texas like we're needed across the country y'all and that's the goal like we need concierge nursing throughout the united states because i see people search literally when i look at google analytics they specifically ask search for a concierge nurse or nurse for hire or this is a good one y'all one time i saw in the analytics it said private nurse for the wealthy like they for different reasons and it's not always just IV therapy and it's not always post-op so people are searching nurse ask because i definitely need a mommy makeover 20 years later yeah y'all want to be my surgery sisters so I can be a little less nervous because I feel like I've been talking about this for 10 years and um, yeah, I need to go on and get on top of this so I can, you know, youth is, you know, only but so many years that we're young and I need to, I need to maximize this next at least 20 years <laughs> with, with whatever I want to wear, when I want to wear it, how I want to wear it. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> So yeah, y'all. Thanks for hanging out with me. I um, I appreciate it. So yeah, check the link in the bio, y'all. Um, register in my it's in my bio or in my story. It's as of right now in my story the masterclass for 
post-op concierge startup with IV therapy as an additional revenue stream will be next week on Wednesday. Okay, register because if you cannot make the live, I will send a replay and you will also get access to the special pricing for the two-day post-op recovery boot camp virtual or live event ticket. Multiple events coming up the rest of the year. They're all there and ready for registration. So you can register, you can pre-register even if you want to do September. It is going to be open and available and you can get that special pricing after that webinar. So masterclass webinar, you know, all of the above. So y'all have been quite, y'all helped me because I'm telling you when I got on here, I was so irritated. Like I probably was like rolling my eyes and everything. <laughs> like it is what it is. <laughs> But I'm still on, on on any day, like super grateful for what I get to do, super grateful to be able to, you know, work with other nurses. It truly energizes me. I do not see myself as a like extrovert or like love large groups of people. But I'll tell you, working with nurses, it always surprises me how much it really energizes me. Like I truly enjoy it and truly inspired by other nurses. Like we are just um, absolutely amazing. So I enjoy that. So it keeps me going. So I'm looking forward to like, I'm always excited for the next round of boot camp or my virtual events. Like I'm, I can't wait because I always, I, I'm like, when I finish, I give it my literal all. Like I'm like, whoa, I gave, I, I gave it everything in me. Right. But instead of feeling exhausted or depleted, I'm literally so energized after the fact. So um <laughs> yeah i know y'all were like my wine or something like i was on here like Ugh. and now you're right <laughs> um, y'all just said you were ready ready now giggling and relaxing i know like i literally relaxed so i thank y'all for just listening just joining in interacting all of the above I didn't even know if anybody be here. I was just like, I'm just going to talk. <laughs> and I do. I do feel so much better. So I'll save this live um, just in case someone comes along. Because I think it's helpful just to know that, hey, don't compromise. Um, you are valuable. And, you know, business is business. We really do have to learn to separate emotion out of it. But at the same time, boundaries are important. And um, again, knowing your value. So hello, hello. Um, okay, IA Wellness Center, right? Did I say it right? <laughs> hello, hello. Thank you for joining. I did. Okay, wait, I almost read that as law. law. Okay, yeah, IA. Yeah, I definitely almost messed that up. So where are you located? Just in case. Sometimes I know y'all by another name, not necessarily by your business. Kind of like people like a lot of people know me by the Concierge Nurse Network. But then there's a whole other group of people that know me as Adaptive Wellness. And then there's a whole other group of people that know me as Ranika Stewart Concierge MP because that's my name on Facebook. So Orlando. Cool. Okay. Awesome. Very close to me. So if I'm in Orlando and I need something. I know where to be. I will say that I four keeps me from being in Orlando too often. That interstate is awful. Do you hear me? <laughs> yeah, that title had me ready, right? Like, I've been saying that all week too. Like, I've been starting everything I do with like, can I be honest? <laughs> I just did a Facebook Live in a group the other day. And I was like, can I be honest? And that was a whole different topic. That topic was relating to what happened with um, a lot of nurses doing IV therapy and being dropped by a very popular or it was increasingly popular oh gosh how do I say it um they were like a like you sign up with them and you pay a membership and they help with systems and set up but they people call it a franchise but it's not really a franchise company but it was a company that was signing nurses up like at a rapid pace and then unfortunately they ended up not being set up correctly in some states and I don't say the name because it's definitely not an intensive bash but I was being honest with nurses in the sense that I told them I told them to be careful about that like it was so frustrating because people came to my boot camps people came to my IV therapy class and they had everything they needed as far as just to get 
started. People came to mentorship with me. We went through systems. We went through the business foundation. Like they had what they needed. And I, I even teach like how to simply find a collaborative position if you need to. Like we, they had it. They had what they needed. Like I, my goal is you start efficiently and compliantly. They had it, and they were all coming at me like, "Hey, I'm gonna sign up with this company." And I'm like, "Do you really need to do that?" Well, be careful. Go slow. Make sure you read everything. And I was, you know, you know, I said that to them, but at the same time. I'm thinking like, you don't even need to do that, but okay, (laughs) you know, kind of like a mom with an adult child. Okay, but that is your choice, but I don't think you should do that. And then in the end, a lot of nurses ended up um, super frustrated and let down. This too will pass. They, you know, um, will be able to move forward. I know they will, but they had what they needed. They just felt like... um, they were it was going to take longer and this was just a way to get quickly up and running but i told them like maybe it should take longer because now you know you have the proper foundation and everything in place and you know you they just wanted to like get up and running super quickly and I told them, be careful about non-competes for some of these companies. Be careful about licensing. Are you, are they able to do your good faith exams? Are they able to make sure that you are operating compliantly? And the answer ended up being in some states, no. So they ended up, you know, without having the collaborative physician or medical director, among other things. So, uh, and, and in my head, I was like, I told y'all, but I didn't want to seem like I was bashing another business, but I definitely was just kind of seeing, you know, some red flags, you know, and my intuition is like, I don't always listen to it, but my intuition is something else, y'all, like vibes are extreme energy. It's always been there. I've always really been a filler um, and just really could feel vibes and energy, and I just was feeling like that wasn't necessarily going to be the greatest thing. And so that was my other, if I'm being honest, or can I be honest, um, live this week. And I was just, you know, in my Facebook group, like, Hey, um, can I be honest with y'all? Because I told (laughs) y'all, so yeah, it wasn't good. All you can do is provide the information and for them to make an informed decision. That's true. I get super again. This is where I still have to learn to separate emotion and not, and realize that I gave and you know, everything that was possible or feasible within a course, within a weekend or whatever the setting was that they mentored with me and that I can't possibly give everything they'll ever need, number one, but I definitely would love, I want to over deliver versus under deliver. So I did just have to take my emotion out of it and also look at it from a business perspective. Okay. Where you saw that, what was the problem? What made you proceed with this? So once I started looking at it that way, you know, where were you stuck? It also, in turn, is something that I can take and help to add on or expand to my program. And just to be sure that I just want to be sure that hopefully they don't feel stuck and that they know that they don't have to, you know, have another person getting a chunk of their business any more than what you absolutely must. You know, we have to have certain things that we do in business regulations, not never telling anyone to shortcut that. It's just that, um, you know, you don't, there's so many people out there waiting to cash in on our value. And if we just, that's what I'm saying. a lot of people know our value and just don't want to pay it. And if, or either they want to cash in on it. Right. So my thing is, you know, I was just disappointed for them with them so that was kind of my other my thoughts there and I'm always trying to be so careful of how I say it because I'm like well it looks like I'm bashing this of the business but it definitely was not that so <laughs> yeah it wasn't good at all at all I was um let's see free indeed see free indeed says I am in Tampa Orlando in between oh and Polk cool what wait what's what's the name of, do you have a business there yet or are you like looking to get started i still feel like polk is untapped first of all if you're in polk you're pretty close to orlando and i feel like orlando is still very untapped as far as um concierge nursing 
it is not what we would call a surgery city, but there are great, great surgeons and lots of um, surgical clients. Then let's not even begin to think for like concierge nursing care and other niches. There's tourists, so much opportunity in Polk and Orlando because Orlando keeps coming further east, right? <laughs> so even like being close to cities like Davenport, um, Winter Haven um, are are great cities to do concierge care not to mention you're still also close to tampa so that's actually a great location very very affordable um, location because hillsborough county over here has just gotten ridiculous and plus it's beautiful i love all the lakes over that way and i those are they have true houses on lakes versus here that you'll pay who knows how much for a house that's on a really a pond like, I love Polk County because they have so many beautiful, real lakes. And um, one day I might be over there with a house on one of them. So, <laughs> yes. Thank you for joining, Aviana. When the, let me know on that podcast date. Lakeland. Oh, I love Lakeland. See, Lakeland. <laughs> lakes. <laughs> but it's funny because lakes, I feel like Winter Haven and Auburndale have even bigger and more abundant lakes than Lakeland itself. But, yes, Lakeland is beautiful i like lakeland it reminds me of the city i'm from which is about an hour 40 something minutes from nashville um it's kind of um like smaller but still you know busy great like a couple of hundred thousand population lakeland reminds me of that i like lakeland quite a bit and again so much better on the taxis and all those things that come with being an adult so that's awesome definitely keep in touch or lots of MPs. Yeah, that is true. There are a lot of MPs doing IV hydration in Orlando. This is why I never came out with, um, it, there's nothing wrong with, when I started, there was hardly, and I, and don't get me wrong, I wasn't like one of those at the very beginning. I started in 2020. Um, but IVs, it was still, I mean, in my area, there was only really in Tampa, in the city. In my area, it was only me. And it was definitely only me as far as post-op concierge care, which is why I started them together. I intentionally started them together. I didn't start just IV therapy. Um, and again, that was on purpose. That's why. So I would say, yes. Now, I would never say that you shouldn't start IV therapy business because we all know you could start an IV therapy business that's focused on a condition. Like you could definitely always separate yourself and have a completely different niche within you know IV therapy so I definitely would say just starting up and servicing any and everyone for IV therapy is definitely not really the move anymore you definitely will want to have it as a niche for me IV therapy is part of my concierge care so post-op right I do offer it in my clinic but what I'm doing with my in-clinic IV therapy is I'm not really interested in people showing up for a hangover drip or people showing up for just a random one-time event, one night stand. I actually am focused more on memberships and packages and especially memberships. So I do weight loss and I do hormones. So the way I am using IV therapy is that it is a um, add-on or included in a membership. So it is definitely not too late to start an IV therapy business. Just really be clear with yourself about who your target client is and who you want to serve and really yes exactly what nurse Haskins says and really niche it down um because yeah it's definitely you can't say it's like too competitive or you shouldn't do it but is it a lot of people any city any city is going to have that saturation and honestly, places like Orlando, you could literally only focus on tourists and mobile and really targeting them and do great. Like it's still so our population is even in Tampa, it's so dense. It kind of doesn't even matter. Like we have so many people per square mile. <laughs> so think about those things and don't be scared to start in a smaller area because what I've noticed with the smaller towns is that people are super excited and they're excited that they don't have to drive to the big city to have this service in their town. Um, <laughs> yes, you have to niche it down. Absolutely. I need to niche down in my business too on packages. Yes. Um, yeah, I pretty well, I mean, it's great if I get the random, like 
you know, one off show up, do a drip and go. But I have really um, been focused since I expanded my clinic more on making IV therapy like a bonus almost. Um, another thing I've done, I have weight loss membership, you know, semaglutide, of course. Doesn't everybody have it? Yes. But what I've done is, here's a little hack for y'all. What I've done, and, and this is more of an MP hack, I have included wellness. Like, so they can have... First of all, they do weight loss. We're going to do a physical. We're going to do an exam. So that's already like a physical for the year, which is always recommended, right? But I also included like they can have up to one, one convenient care visit a month. So they could, I have a package where they can have a convenient care visit a month. They can have a drip a month. And what I'm also going to do is um, I have some other recovery services. I have compression, Normatec. I have red light therapy. And I have a sauna blanket, so I'm going to add on to where when they come in once a month or once a week for their semaglutide, part of their membership will be using one of those services. They could do a drip. Drip would be an add-on, or they can just do the compression, or they can do the red light, or they could do the sauna blanket. I'm actually also going to add an actual sauna, infrared sauna. So things like that. I'm I'm going for the membership Um you know, route that they don't just get semaglutide, they also have access to these services. So I'm making it more definitely spa like, but not med spa. Med spa is a no for me. Um, no Botox or fillers or anything like that. I do have a micro needling pen, but basically more focused on what else is synergistic with recovery or synergistic with wellness or synergistic with weight loss. So red light is great for all of the above. Um, the sauna blanket, you know, definitely is great for weight loss and or a sauna. So that's kind of the route I'm going. And eventually, y'all know, y'all guessed it, eventually I'll even have an um, actual live event in my clinic where I will show you all of that. So let's see. So I do post-op care, lymphedema, body contouring. And see, if you, that's and that's how I look at it. Add IV therapy. You know, because you have you have clients coming to you for these services, so it can make a great add on. It is great as part of a package. Um, again, packages, memberships, um, just bundling things to separate and stand out. I mean, there's plenty of places in every city that they could just pop in, get a drip, you know. And it's all in who you target because I do use Google, I do use Facebook. I don't do as many Facebook ads, but I definitely do Google. And it's you know you can very specifically target. Um, how you want to target and who you want to find on my adaptive wellness page y'all we have Taylor Swift in town and I literally sat down and made a Swift drip flyer it's um, um recover swiftly <laughs> in honor of Taylor Swift being in town <laughs> and I literally ran it as an ad and targeted you well you guessed it Taylor Swift fans people who are traveling to Tampa people in a certain area in Tampa where the concert is being held so I don't run a lot of Facebook ads, but I definitely like to do, you know, stuff like that and really, really target. Let's see. Oh, let me scroll up. So let's see. How do you do your gift cards? Do you do those? I do. I just use Square, though. And those usually are only the holidays. People will reach out wanting to purchase for someone else. And they purchase some. There's a link you can create. I did it via Square because I use Square as my payment processor. And they can purchase it and then it'll email it to the person they purchase it for. And then when they pay, you have the option of, of course, taking a regular credit card or taking that gift card. So, yeah, I definitely have done those before. Oh, yes, Randy, you are free indeed one. Let me add that one. You are so welcome. I'm loving this. Thank you for this. I'm just rambling. <laughs> so, uh, y'all, sometimes I'm a talker. I really am quiet in real life, but it's, I, I told y'all, I got on here more like fired up about somebody questioning my price, and it's just gone from there. <laughs> um, I want to send her. I need to connect with you. Absolutely. I love connecting. I think I need to do like a concierge nurse meetup for Florida. I wanted to do them across the across like Florida, Dallas or somewhere in Texas, um, Atlanta, Nashville. And eventually I'll make it all the way to the West Coast. But yeah, I, what I'm trying to do now is whenever I'm in, in this city, I try to like in my Facebook group, I'll usually announce and say who wants to meet up. So I did that the last time I was in Dallas. And I also did it when I was in Nashville a couple of months ago. So I do try to like literally no, no payment involved, just meet up with other nurses and 
just network, connect, or do like what I'm doing now, just kind of ramble and mastermind. So let's see, Mahogany says, you are doing exactly what I want to do, but I have been too afraid to start literally everything. Don't be afraid. Um, have you seen my effort campaign? That's one of, that's part of my effort campaign. You have to say effort to fear or don't even say effort to fear. Just say effort. I'm afraid, but do it anyway. Right? So effort, <laughs> do it anyway. Do it afraid. Um, mentorship. Um, so my main mentorship right now is definitely my courses. However, as far as like one-on-one -on -one mentorship, no, but I do do group mentorships. What I want to know, and I think what I need to gauge before I open the mentorship back up, because I've done just a general, um, I think it was 12 week concierge mentorship. So I was doing those every after every boot camp last year. So yes, I do, but it's always group because one, it's a group, it's interactive, we learn from each other. I, and also because, well, one-on-one, -on -one, is always of course a little tougher now what i do one-on-one -on -one is if you want to come to tampa and you want to do a vip day in my clinic whether it's iv therapy or if you actually want to do a ride with me and hang out with me for post-op i do those um do offer those vip days those are i don't think they're in my bio let's see will you have a concierge nurse non-iv course anytime soon so are you meaning like maybe post-op recovery only because i do that now uh, nova care link i do post-op recovery concierge alone so even though it's the boot camp is post-op and iv therapy i do actually offer just like you could do post-op only or you can do iv therapy only so you can do either day is that what you mean but yeah i definitely i was saying earlier that i was looking at making the concierge boot camp concierge probably all one weekend with no IV therapy involved because that's what we you know that's what we need so um yeah I definitely am considering that um just let me know kind of like what what you're thinking are you or do you have a certain niche that you want to start in as of yet you was thinking a la carte so I would say for general like if you're looking for general concierge and you're not like, oh, I want to do post-op or I want to do postpartum. It's probably like the mentorship when I announce it. I know I'm dragging my feet, but um, I'm getting on it. But that would be good. Just like a 12 week for any niche you can set up or concierge mentorship. I've done that before. So that is something I can bring back. Hello. Um, you love the one-to-one? -one? I... I typically um, do it as like at least a couple of people at a time mentorship usually 12 weeks we do like a zoom twice a month and usually I give um, all the mentees things that they should be actively working on during that 12 weeks to build their concierge business um, NovaCare link I also have what is called a digital mentorship it's just um, very foundational concierge things it's at the link in my bio it's under the at your pace so that's another um so i'm seeing these one-to-ones y'all do know one-to-one -one mentorships are are y'all okay with those prices i i may test it <laughs> are y'all on my email list too by the way if you go into hmm if you go into my bio and go to my digital store and download the concierge startup task it's at payhip.com slash the concierge nurse network download the concierge startup test that puts you on my email list <laughs> so puts you on my email list and you also got something for it so <laughs> oh the one-to-one -to, -one to tampa oh yeah look that you can always do that you can always do whether it's um iv or like i said post-op if you just want to spend a day with me and work on like your own like whatever we can do that too I just, of course, people want IV therapy and people want post-op first and foremost. But generally, like, uh, yeah, definitely. Y'all are giving me ideas. Like, but I like to know what, what nurses are looking for, for sure. So I appreciate that. Definitely something for me to consider and think about. Um, I'm looking to launch some new programs and mentorship offerings towards the summer. I'm, I expanded my clinic in December. 
So, which of course, that's also great. Spend the time in my clinic and really see the setup. But I spent it in December. And ever since then, I feel like I looked up and it was April. So I have been pretty tied up. I added weight loss. I added the hormone replacement or hormone optimization. And those two things right there. Plus, I've all, plus surgery season. So I hadn't really put out any new courses or any new mentorship offerings um this first quarter so i would definitely say look for them towards the summer and be on my email list and just download you know that concierge or that business startup task and that'll put you on my email list so just go into the bio not to mention y'all i always do like intro calls just to you know talk and see what questions you have so all in my bio it is so beautiful out here oh my goodness it's been a day tampa <laughs> It's always a good time. I mean, it's great too. To, it's always a great time to come to Tampa, I'll say. The only time that I feel like is not the most great time or the greatest time, I should say, is um, during our rainy season, which Miami just experienced the beginning of rainy season. It was insane, y'all. It flooded to death down there. So, But otherwise, it's um, definitely a beautiful city. And I'm just going to brag a little bit on myself and say you will love my post-op wellness and recovery spa it is absolutely gorgeous it was a labor of love and super exciting to be able to expand that way and i am super excited also to be able to host my boot camps there what does the post-op specialty consist of do you teach lymphatic drainage too so let me tell you a lot of people ask me one if post-op recovery or even my boot camp is um pertains to lymphatic drainage and the answer is no when i did lymphatic drainage i took a five-day course that actually it, it issued a credential like mld-c now different schools may issue a different credential so i took mine with the academy of lymphatic studies now that was foundational from there i went and trained with a massage therapist from there i've trained even more I took an advanced post-op lymphatic drainage course with the same Academy of Lymphatic Studies. Um, so I don't teach that because concierge nursing, post-op nursing, that is one thing. Like I can I can teach and talk about that all day, right? But lymphatic drainage is not like that. I, I'm not an expert master at that. And I feel like I see people teach it. Once again, not bashing. But I don't think that... The, most people can cover the the intricacies and it, the what is involved as far as the in-depth coverage that is needed in a weekend. I, I see classes where they're like, we're teaching this, we're teaching this, 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 and they're teaching the lymphatic system. I mean, if you're doing body contouring and they're covering it for the sake of body contouring, that's one thing. But for the sake of post-op care, you, I feel like you really should take a true course and usually most of those courses are going to be anywhere from about three to five days and and a really good one typically is not only is going to require that you are a licensed professional meaning a nurse a nurse practitioner um a, you know occupational therapist massage therapist but licensed professional so yeah i say be careful i just feel like any and everybody doesn't need to be teaching that norton is a great school by the way so yeah schools like that norton school of lymphatics academy of lymphatic studies i think there's another one called close like k-l-o-s-e maybe those they have been around for years they are well established they are um they they have excelled like they know what they're doing and their programs are amazing so i feel like if you're going to really get into post-op care as far as post-op lymphatic drainage invest in truly um going into that as a craft invest put the time in and put the thousands in i did it i put the thousands in <laughs> and i put the hours in so that's why i don't teach lymphatic drainage or post at my post-op recovery boot camp because where would it fit we have enough to do not to mention again that's not my complete expertise that's just that's something that i do i enjoy and i definitely um would consider myself to be a trained expert now and evolving and learning but i'm not going to teach that in like an hour during you know boot camp let's see 
what does the post op especially what else does it consist of? So for me, it just cons it consists of um, concierge care to clients after any surgery, um, especially in my case, um, cosmetic or plastic surgery. So we have an evidence based framework that is integrated in to the recovery care, the recovery care plan. And it's not just like pick them up and put them in the bed. Like we're really, you know, looking to elevate their recovery, provide education and partner with them. And of course, when you offer lymphatic drainage, that is a continuation. So for me, yes, I have the concierge for post-op care or post-op recovery nursing care, but then we do continue with that client and we're able to, because I did invest in the post-op lymphatic drainage training, right? So that's what I do. I hear all the time that you should have products within your service business. What is your rec recommendation? I actually agree. And we, so many, like anything that compliments. So for me, what I would like to have for my post ops is not necessarily the shapewear, but like um, um, my mom happens, she's super talented and she makes body butters and oils. So she's able to create some blends and that i've been testing out to have as a product in my clinic relating to healing and recovery but um if you're doing you know tell me some certain body contouring i know a lot of body contouring people have like slimming gels and different creams so whatever relates to a service you're offering and you can private label them so you don't necessarily have to make them just it happens that my mom makes body butters and oils but you could also private label um i know a place I, i've gone to a few shows slim spa they have some great products for private label so you private label it there's a few there's one company called legere it's like l-e-g-e-r-e -E, i think they have a lot of different supplements that you could private label especially if you're offering weight loss. So whatever products that relate to some of the services you offer, of course, if you're doing post-op recovery, post-op care, I tell nurses, you can private label your own tea related to recovery. You could offer compression wear. You could offer or private label BBL pillows, lipo foams, you know, get them wholesale. I typically don't private label anything, but I do like to get some products and brand them relating to um, a gift box for the client. So things like that. But yeah, products and the goal of products is either as an upsell or you may have an online store like a Shopify site and clients can go buy those services or you could refer them like hey i think you would benefit from this you know like based on what i'm seeing or what you're dealing with i feel that you could benefit from this and you can say that with any service can y'all tell i've been doing some sales trainings i mean i never stop y'all like as a business owner the training the growth the development it never stops so but look i think that this would be beneficial to you so yeah you could direct them to a website um, so yeah, Nova Care Link said, thank you for explaining that. Absolutely. You are so welcome. But yeah, you could have a, a, a online portal or website. You could also partner with like if you do like supplement companies and you know, you kind of like you just get a percentage or when you refer them to that site to purchase a product. But the goal of a product is definitely that you can also make money outside of having to provide direct hands on care that you're not always exchanging time for money right so that's the goal of products so when you're thinking of products be strategic and um be okay with and be prepared to do the upsell or um give out a sample and make them want more but yeah that, that's the goal you're not always hands-on having to provide a service to get paid right so we like I, I feel that in concierge nursing, just generally speaking, it's not my goal to trade time for money. My goal is that I'm providing value and upping the value in a package. And it's, I do have my base goal hourly rate, but I'm not just exchanging this per hour, you know, this amount of time per hour. I am providing the time, but we also provide, you know, um, on call access to me for any questions. We also provide red light therapy. You know, we also we have compression, lead compression. Um, you know, so 
included like what else can i include in that package that is not labor intensive but ups the value so that's two things i like to up the value of my packages i'm huge on packages and then also definitely when i send out my emails to my clients when i'm onboarding them i automatically have the add-ons there like hey would you like to add on a post-op drip would you like to add on your post-op lymphatic sessions um if you sell fajas you could say would you like to add on a compression garment or you could up the value of your packages and include that in your package so it's um yeah it's i do enjoy the ability i don't have official products so i do but i do have add-ons but i definitely i like that question because i need to get products too um in office especially in office um when they come in i definitely um would love to not (laughs) to have some product keep in mind though this is what i was about to say when you have products you do need to collect tax on those remember with like most of our medical services they're not taxable we don't collect tax but with products you need to, you need to have sometimes you need to have what they call a reseller's permit like if you're buying wholesale and then reselling at a different price or you need to have a um, and or you need to have the tax account with your local city so that you can um, you know you sell a bottle of recovery oil and you collect a dollar of tax you need to be filing a tax return so now we're back in now we're into like yes you need an accountant so yeah keep that in mind with products that you need to be collecting tax on them (laughs) Uh, girl you are dropping all kinds of gems i know i'm just rambling (laughs) this is the funny thing though like people always say like you're never ever hold back information um I feel like sometimes when the when my nurses when they come to boot camp they like oh my god but in a good way they're like this is so much information and I'm like well should I hone it in should I take some out should, they're like no 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 <laughs> like we we this is great but man like I'm telling you they're tired in a very good way at the end of the day <laughs> so it's always my I'm telling y'all like my goal is always to over deliver that's why when all the nurses were just running over to like sign up with that company i was so disappointed i'm like but y'all have what you need i promise you you have it (laughs) so so yeah it was um it's good though i'm gonna keep on doing it and i honestly just like i said i got so tied up with expanding my clinic that i hadn't been as visible and guess what nurses are like i'm like you know I'm only going to offer two live boot camps this year. Um, I Again, I hadn't released any new mentoring programs. And people, the nurses are like, where are you? And when is the next? And how can I sign up? And I went on TikTok Live even yesterday with another nurse. I think her name is Night Nurse on um, Night Nurse, your favorite Night Nurse. Super cool lady. Um, she reached out to me to do a live on TikTok and and it really told me, like it inspired me because it was so many nurses asking great questions just like here. And it just made me realize that like when it comes to what I do and what I'm an expert in, like I nurses are looking for this information. So I need to be here and be more visible and not let, you know, there there's two things that I love. One, definitely my business and what I do in my clinic and my concierge. But again, I also love like sharing that possibility and light bulb moment that I had with nurses and showing them what is possible. So genuine gems. Yes, thank you so much for staying hanging in here with me and all my rambling. I'm definitely gonna save this. I feel like I need to figure out how to actually um download this one. I need to figure out how to download this one and save it to YouTube because I did. I really did kind of just go off, didn't I? <laughs> in a good way, though. In a good way. So, hello, hello, <laughs> Daydream Status. Welcome, welcome. Daydream Status. I hope she's still on here. Say hi if you are. She's down in Miami. And my YouTube is the Concierge Nurse Network, too yeah okay you're here i was just gonna say hello hello i hope that all is going well down there and that you are not um that you're able to still move around with all the flooding and also i was super excited that i could um this is the power of the network the concierge nurse network 
is that I was able to refer a client to her just a couple of weeks ago. I was super excited because there was no, like it was totally no strings attached. That client reached out to me. They were looking for post-op care. They were ready to pay. As soon as I told them her website, <laughs> I was like, hey, check out this person. She was like, where do I pay? I, I, where do I pay? And I'm like, okay, hold on, hold on. Let me get you in touch and let y'all do a consult. <laughs> like, But it was just a good feeling to be able to like have this network and other nurses. And Daydream status, she did not attend boot camp before, but we just connected randomly on Instagram and I just she's in Miami and of course every now and then because I used to go to Miami for post-op um, clients still schedule consultations with me and reach out for care in Miami so I have a couple of nurses that I reach out and refer to down there which again is a great feeling yes it was so good so grateful yeah I actually sent another one your way now I just send them your way sometimes I get to like message you and sometimes I don't <laughs> but um but yes I actually sent your link like your your link in your bio on Instagram to another client the other day and um I can't remember her name but I did um she had a consult scheduled and I said hey I got a nurse I can recommend for you down there so what would you recommend as a good first digital product as a post-op concierge provider so for your clients to download definitely something a frequently asked question that you get from clients that you answer so maybe it's like what do i eat after surgery or what should i do to help with pre-surgery anxiety or what can i do to prepare my body best for surgery any kind of like i'm i'm one of those researchers so when i see clients or even in facebook groups or as i scroll instagram if i see them asking certain questions what you want to do is take that faq and write a blog that's the answer to that question or an ebook and that could be the download so if they if, if that's what you mean as far as like you're trying to create a product that your clients could either purchase maybe you could make it like if it's a you know really involved you could be a 20 dollar download or if you're looking for it more so to get them on your email list you know um it could be a freebie so or both you could create products for both purposes right but definitely faqs i read facebook groups i read you know i follow surgeons and follow what people are asking on their instagram pages so i'm really invested in the industry and what i do and in helping other nurses so i pay attention to two different things i pay attention to what nurses need and what they're asking and their faqs as far as concierge nursing and i also pay attention to the clients i serve as far as the post-op recovery and what their struggles are um and what they're asking what they want to know as they prepare for surgery so that is um kind of what i would say to that if i answered that correctly the daydream status says thank you you are so welcome keep me posted on how it's going but or how it goes with that client she seemed like a really um a really good client she was just super grateful she <laughs> to be able to find but wanted to do a pay okay so you do have a freebie so yeah if you do something that's more involved yes like it could be so the supply list is a freebie so maybe you could go a little more involved on another topic that they have a lot of questions about or even expand that supply list and have supplies, the proper diet, positioning, you know, you could have a whole little like, and you could specify it to different surgeries, by the way. So you could say, you know, BBL recovery, tummy tuck recovery. You could also put that all in one ebook, but yeah, and have it as a, um, as a paid product. That's a good idea. I just, Y'all, and, and side note, I definitely use AI to help with that. I don't take AI and just copy and paste it, but it's definitely helpful for making that framework AI, um, artificial intelligence, AKA chat GPT, um, Jasper.AI, those kind of programs. I definitely um, use those <laughs> to outline my frameworks. I actually was using copy.AI for a few months. And then when chat GPT came along, I loved it, of course. So I actually did a subscription to it. So I use that to, so I have an iron protocol that I had the notes and I had my notes and I know what I do in my clinic, but I just needed to put it into a protocol. So I went right to chat GPT and had it start the protocol. And then I went and integrated in like my process in my clinic 
And so I'm about to publish the iron protocol as a paid product, as a download, because a lot of nurses want to know how to do iron for post-op. So yeah, y'all look out for that. I will have a iron um, protocol in my link in my bio soon too. I don't post this stuff nearly. I post a lot of my story, but not necessarily on the feed as y'all can see. So I definitely say watch my story because I definitely tend to post a lot there. Um, so I'm still trying to grasp. I use the heck out of Canva, but I haven't grasped AI or gotten the hang of AI and Canva together. But I have heard good things, so I need to learn that quickly because I do use a lot of. I may I use Canva all the time. I even will hire other people, and then they use Canva. So I'm like, well, I can just. I guess I can do it because I use the heck out of Canva. But yes, or either I'll have sometimes I'll hire somebody and have them make me a ton of templates and then I'll just kind of feed off of those for a few months. But yeah, definitely. So use Canva and AI. I might need to pull up some YouTubes to figure that out for sure. I don't know. So yeah, y'all, it's been great chatting with y'all. I'm reading back through the comments. Thank y'all so much. Yeah, YouTube, the Concierge Nurse Network, TikTok, the Concierge Nurse Network, Facebook group or page, the Concierge Nurse Network. And y'all know Instagram, the Concierge Nurse Network. My business business is Adaptive Wellness or I have two business Instagrams, Adaptive Wellness or Tampa Post-Op Nurses. One is Tampa Post-Op Nurses is just the backup to Adaptive Wellness just in case, you know, Instagram, these platforms aren't ours. So what was AI for? Oh, artificial intelligence. So I was saying that I use it, oh, for like protocols. Um, like, for example, somebody, so I, um, I, I have been telling nurses like, hang tight, y'all. I'm going to share my, any nurse that came to IV therapy boot camp, I'm telling them I'll share the protocol, you know, but my protocol for how I do my iron infusions is like all crazy. And it's just like, you know, so I was like, hang tight. I'm going to organize this into something decent, right? Now that was probably two or three months ago. So I tell them, but I was just going to formalize it and organize it, right? And make it into a protocol that's, that's log logical and makes sense. Anyway, imagine my surprise when I chat GPT came along and I got something done that I had been putting off for like a couple of months within 10 minutes. They chat GPT generated the foundation for the protocol. And then I literally took that framework, that foundation, and then integrated in my scribbly notes that were all over the place into a logical order for the protocol. So yeah, I'll be able to publish that as a digital product for nurses here shortly. <laughs> yes, to help with formulating digital products. Yep. It is perfection. I was like, I had been working on or trying to sit down and work on this for however long in like five minutes i had that done in fact one of the nurses was like hey um did you ever share that iron infusion and i was like you know i didn't um hold on and that's when i did it and and i sent it back to her in like five ten minutes and she was like wow <laughs> but she's got the rough draft she was like wow <laughs> what nurse asking you have got to got to go oh my god the light okay for example somebody came into my facebook group and they were like hey like can anybody share a protocol or um sop standard operating procedure for doing a blood draw because some concierge nurses want to add lab draws to their concierge services right so i went right to chat gpt and i was like protocol for blood draw or drawing labs and it generated in seconds and <laughs> and i was like wow yeah that easy I have used it. Uh, you can literally use it to write your employee handbooks. You can use it. I needed a consent because when I hire nurses, I need to do a background check. So I, I need an authorization or a release to do a background check, right? So I went right over to chat GPT and I was like, authorization for background check. Bam. Put that into a document. And then when I onboarded that nurse, I sent her the link or the paper to, for the authorization to sign for the background check so yes you have got to get yes <laughs> she's like are you serious i'm so behind yes it is get get on chat g you can even just use it like play around with it 
when you don't have a subscription, if it's a peak time, they won't let you in. But once you get a prescription, I mean prescription, Lord, <laughs> subscription, once you get a subscription, you can get on there whenever. And yeah, like I, before I had a subscription, it would cut me off after a certain amount of prompts and I would get on there and play around with it. But now, like, I can just get on there. Like, yes, you can build literally your policies, your procedures. I was playing around with different things for IV therapy because, of course, like, my course included included some basic protocols. But sometimes students will say, I need a protocol more for this for my clinic. And I'm like, now you can do that. You can just go in there and, like, make the protocol, put it in, copy it, paste it into a Word document, and add on yes they are sops are my headaches same here so you can literally make the end of the the ai will say kind of like hey i don't know a lot about this topic but this is what i have and it's usually good enough and sometimes if it doesn't give you exactly what you need you can kind of fine tune your prompts so you kind of learn it just like the ai is learning you, you kind of also learn how to prompt it and how to get what you want out of it and if anything you take what it gives you and then you you fine tune it so people are like well you shouldn't use it for blogs i use it for a foundation or outline for certain topics and then i still add in like my voice my touch and what i want to include and be sure that they know the reader knows so it's I definitely wouldn't copy and paste for blog purposes, right? You know, but it's definitely a great outline. You can. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. My husband called and messed it up, so I'm going to go get this other phone and call him because he's messing up my vibe. Like, I'm over here like, yeah, chat GPT, GPT. Hopefully y'all can hear me. Hopefully. Yeah, I think it came back. I had to come in here and get the other phone. Yeah, GPT, like P is in Paul. Hello? Um, the chocolate chip cookie dough. Now it's going in and out. All right, all right. Bye. So yeah, it just completely. I think my. Am I? I'm gonna have to end it. I think it cut me off. <laughs> okay, awesome. Got it. Okay, good. Cause like that one phone call messed up everything. Messed up my signal. Got me going in and out. <laughs> like so, he was. We have this place called Brewster's here, and it is so good. Like, I do not like ice cream much. Like, I'm not an ice cream person, but that's some good ice cream. Some of y'all may be familiar, but yes, you are so welcome. Yes, get on there. Like, you, I, I, a couple of, maybe about a month ago, people were, everybody was talking about chat GPT. Anyway, I would literally spend a Friday night just on there messing around with it, doing different prompts. Like, amazing especially for SOPs like you will have one in minutes and you literally can just excuse me fine tune it make it yours in minutes and it was funny because um people probably a lot of people use AI before you know now for to make these kind of things but there's people who are generating these things via AI and charging tons of money for them by the way like even me so I generated my framework for the iron protocol however remember I said other aspects of it are truly based on my research and what I do in my clinic so it's a merge but there's people who would literally generate a document and then <laughs> they're charging crazy y'all <laughs> for something they generated with um with um AI I mean I can't say it's not smart but they do and so yeah <laughs> Yeah, we have one in Lakeland. Uh, yes, Brewster's ice cream. I had never heard of it until we got one here, and it's amazing. In fact, some days I'm like, should I franchise that? Like, that's a good little franchise if you're just looking for something, you know, outside of nursing, <laughs> outside of healthcare. That is, when I tell y'all, that's some good ice cream. It is some good ice cream. It's Friday, you know, I'm like, I randomly am craving ice cream for some reason. 
I know why. Y'all know why too. If you know what you know. <laughs> y'all know why. <laughs> That's why I got on here with the can I be honest attitude. Like the y'all know why. <laughs> so yeah, it is very good. Very, very good. So yeah, SOPs for sure. There's something else that nurses ask me for a lot. And I'm like, you can generate legal documents. Like sometimes they'll ask me for independent contractor agreements. And I tell them like, here's a little hack. And I would tell y'all is wonder dot legal, like W O N D E R dot legal, wonder dot legal. You can generate, pick your state, fill in the blanks of what, like they may say, what's your business name? You know, what's the address you can generate a, um, completely generate an independent contractor agreement on wonder dot legal. Now it used to be free, but like everything else, I think they charge you for documents now, but it's still worth it because it's, you know, if you paid a lawyer, you definitely always would still want your lawyer to maybe or attorney to review it. But for generating it, you didn't have to pay them, you know, which probably is what they would do too is generate it on something like that and then <laughs> charge you for another an extra hour, right? So that's helpful. Now, great for having them review or add on. So that still saves you time. But wonder.legal, wonder.legal for documents. And then, of course, like chat GPT, jasper.ai, copy.ai. Those kind of programs are good for like your SOPs, your protocols. Um, amazing for that. Okay. So I definitely, I think I've given y'all about three to four to five gems. And yes, they are worth it for sure. They have their value, like you know. That's how we started off talking about value, but definitely, um, you know, things like that. I'm never going to say generate this document and don't have an attorney view it, but it is definitely good for, you know, say you have a retainer and you pay for this many hours. It's definitely good for saving some hours. You don't have to pay them for an hour for that, you know, because most of the time they definitely going to charge you for the hour, even if it was five minutes. <laughs> uh, she said, girl, more than three or four gems. I know I got on here and like <laughs> unloaded <laughs> Jasper.ai. Yes, that's the one. Yes. It's getting itchy out here. I don't know what it is. Definitely must be the pollen. And I'm not usually a allergy person, but oof. But yeah, jasper.ai, copy.ai, and I definitely said chat GPT. And there's more on the way. Like, AI is going to be, of course, huge. I mean, it's been there in the background, collecting data, learning, and it's going to continue. And now it's just something that is more accessible. And I think my subscription to chat GPT was like $20 a month. Well worth it to me because y'all heard me. I'm literally generating documents and nurses like they're like, whoa, like that's so yes, it's really, really simple. But what's funny is before this really came out, I was in a mentoring with another lady and she was showing us this stuff and she was saying like a lot of people that you, you know, work with that create blogs or write blogs for you or create content, they're probably using software like this. And I was like, oh my God. But then like about six weeks later, <laughs> it went more like mainstream and everybody started learning about. So this is like something that's been there kind of in the background. A lot of us just didn't know about it, you know, but yeah, we're probably paying people like me. I had a ghost writer for blogs and they probably was doing that. Like they do still have to do some research and add to it. But just by the way the blog read now, I'm thinking like, yeah, I hired like people on Fiverr, you know, to write some blogs for me. Then I take them just like I do with the AI and add in what I want to add, add in my voice, you know, edit. So it just gave me a starting point. So I've always been one to, you know, use it as a tool, but I wouldn't take the blog and just copy it and paste it. Right. But anyway, they wrote the blog for me. I had to pay them. Meanwhile, they probably were right on chat GPT or some program similar, not chat GPT because that's new, but like something similar, like some sort of AI program. <laughs> and then I'm paying them good money. So it says we need a tour of your office. You know, I thought I'd, I haven't done that in a while. I have to do that next week. And I'll leave it like if y'all if people don't get on or can't like get on when I do it, I will. Um. <laughs> Ronika said you it's still me I am still here talking <laughs> I do not know how long I've been on here talking I think even my husband when he just called me didn't expect me to still be on here talking and I am still on here talking and I have not had anything to drink y'all I have not I just um 
like I said, I just got on here like venting at first. So, <laughs> but yeah, I definitely need to give y'all a tour of my office because I'm super proud of it. Oh my God, <laughs> two hours. <sighs> For real, you know what? You may be right because it wasn't even time for my son to get out of school when I got on here. And I think he's gotten picked up and they're heading to get ice cream for me too. Wow. Yep, it's still me. I never made it to do my TikTok or Facebook live. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm still here. Look, we have gotten into... <laughs> She said it is a whole nother day. You're such a comedian, Avion, and you cracked me up. Look. We have gone so many different ways with this conversation. We even went into, like, we were just talking about AI. I went back and watched the um, AI. <laughs> I went back and watched the AI in the B&E Elite um, group. And, yeah, it's amazing. Like, he has probably graduated from high school by now. Lord have mercy. It feels like it is going about that fast. So, don't remind me. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, he, um, we've talked about like generating SOPs, blogs, employee manuals, bl background check authorizations, all with AI. We have, we have gone some products, adding products to your business. I tell, if I can figure out how to download this, I'll put it right onto my YouTube channel. So, so yeah, we definitely have had a great conversation and I'm glad it's not a whole nother day because man, I just, as y'all can tell, I just love sitting outside. I just love, I'm on the porch. I just love sitting outside. This is like literally all I do. If I'm not in my clinic working or doing the concierge care, sitting on the front porch, debriefing, usually just me, like quietly with my feet up. But today I hung with y'all and I, I loved it. Usually, like, my feet are <laughs> like this, and it's just me chilling. Y'all see, I got this, um, I got this, um, what do you call it? It's called, it's like a craftsman style, is what they call this, um, front porch. And I'm from the country, Tennessee, so I love the front porch. I don't really like sweet tea, though, but I do love the front porch, some lemonade or whatever. Yes, definitely. I live on a park, see y'all? I'm giving y'all a tour of my immediate neighborhood but this is like a park in front of my house so this is like my this is truly like like days like today <laughs> where I need to just which is most every day for me like but just how I decompress we definitely have to have that um time for decompressing and mindset yeah it's super um just relaxing and it doesn't even matter if it's raining you know, if it's storming, not lightning, because lightning is crazy here. That's actually a kid crying. That might be the bird you hear. But nonetheless, like, it doesn't really matter. Like, for me, like, this is my spot. This is my space. And it doesn't matter what the weather is. It's still beautiful to me. So even if it were pouring rain right now, I'd just be like, this is so beautiful. <laughs> because it really is. <laughs> Yes, come see me when you get this mommy makeover. <laughs> She's like, I got my mommy makeover and came back and you're still going. <laughs> I wish I had gotten mine. Oh, my gosh. So maybe, um, yeah, it's been a great combo, though, y'all. I guess if I, that's a record, y'all. I set a record for myself being on Instagram Live this long. So I guess I'll. nobody's going to watch a replay this long. <laughs> They're going to be like, what? <laughs> you know instagram used to limit it too used to you couldn't be on here past an hour i don't know what happened i guess they decided that they don't care anymore <laughs> but yeah i used to be like who can talk on instagram for an hour anyway and now look at me oh my gosh <laughs> definitely crazy <laughs> so yeah y'all i guess i will <laughs> yes they will <laughs> i guess i will my ice cream should be pulling up any minute, so I'm going to enjoy this ice cream and just continue to decompress. And I thank y'all so, so, so much. I'm taking notes. If you can't do the replay, I've been here the whole time. <laughs> Look, we hadn't even been like, yeah, we definitely, I got to come to Atlanta. When I'm in Atlanta, I will definitely reach out. Um, yeah, we got to like, you know, just sit down and chat, lunch, whatever. Yes, you are so welcome. Send me and ask me some ice cream. Y'all, if you got a Brewster's in Dallas, definitely hit that up because it is good ice cream. 
And um, yes, I would look. Yes, you have. Like, okay, a few of y'all. Well, Evian, I know you came in and out, but like most, like y'all that are here, y'all been here the whole, most of y'all been here the whole time. And it was funny because when I hit the live button, I was like, oh, no, who's going to get on here? I'm just going to talk. Yes, Free Indeed, IA Wellness Center, Black Nurse Entrepreneurs, Nurse Haskins. Thank y'all for hanging with me. Did I miss somebody that was here? The whole oh daydream status. Hey, you've been here a while too. <laughs> Thank y'all for hanging with me, by the way. Have a great, great, awesome weekend. Hit me up, Aviana, about this podcast. You see, I guess I'm a talker, right? So Thank y'all so much and have a great weekend. Come on here. I love the palm tree. And yes, vice versa. If you're in Tampa, please, please come hang out with me. Lunch, whatever. Okay. All right, y'all. Bye.